Well, it's, it's my pleasure to be here, you guys. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's great to be on with the pub again. We're, we're big supporters of the pub, like Morgan said, and we think you guys are doing a tremendous job as far as getting the education to the trader and putting it in a place that's accessible and a uh, very effective, I think, way to, to disseminate a lot of great information. And uh, before we start, I do need to appease our, our lawyers, of course, and legalese. We have to put a dis standard disclaimer up, so I'm going to try and share that here with you real quick. I'm going to go ahead and just read this very quickly, so please bear with me. Those of you who have heard this before, I'm sure. Uh, today, this demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and accompanying software plugins, and is not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using these specific indicators and features within the software. The information softwares and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, remove that. Uh, sounds like you guys need me to get a little closer to the microphone. How is that? Does that sound better? Test, test, testing one, two, three. Hopefully you can hear my voice okay. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Yeah, this is not the usual platform. Uh, sometimes I get a little uh, <laughs> I get a little turned around when I'm using a little bit different platform. I'll try and turn it up for you. All right. Uh, some questions out of the gate here, and I'll try to answer all of your questions today. Um, it sounds like we do we do do futures, Jim. Uh, more than just stocks and ETFs, uh, more than our name implies, we've been around for a good 30 years offering charting solutions, and we've come up with something we've been building here over the last three years. It's a piece of software technology that is patent pending. We're the only ones that have it. And it caused quite a stir in Las Vegas when we were there hanging around uh, with Morgan. Uh, we released it uh, literally at that event was the first time we showed it to the public. And this uh, piece of software really visualizes something very different. Uh, it's going to look at technical analysis in a way that you've never seen it before. Uh, it sounds like some of you in the room here already have the software. Um, but what we're going to do is just demonstrate it to you and show you what it does. And then we'll take your examples. And hopefully, I can get to all your questions as well. The, what you're looking at right now is what you something you'd probably see normally is a price bar chart. We can zero in on it and look at it. But what we're looking at with the forecaster, it answers kind of a fundamental question that is a bit of a problem in the technical analysis world. Um, based on the last 30 years of technical analysis, everything you know kind of goes up to the hard right edge of the chart, um, and that is kind of the issue. We're always looking backwards in technical analysis, and that's okay. That's provided a lot of great technical analysis over the years, but there's really never been anything that pushes things forward and gives you kind of a forward-looking view at price based on technical analysis, based on past performance. So what our programmers have put together over the last three years is a very complicated probability analysis and statistical um, price generation that shows where we might expect price to go going forward after certain technical events have happened. So for example, we're looking at right now the, the spider. And on this price chart, you see several of these yellow. I'm going to go ahead and just zero in on these a little longer view of these yellow events. And what these are, these are event markers. And they're showing us every time that we've had a 52-week high. Down below here, and I'll expand this so you can see it a little better, we have 63 recognized events uh, that the system is constantly looking for. And the most recent event that has happened to the spider is a 52-week high out of these events. And so based on these events, uh, it's going to project here in this second tab what we call a forecasting cloud. And it's a bit of a heat map, you might say. I've heard it said from uh, people who've initially seen this. And what it's doing is it's telling us, based on 52-week high events in the past, when they have happened, that this is what the spider has reacted to it in this way. Price 
has done the following. Now, how do we translate this particular map? What we're looking at here on the left, that's today. So no more right side of the chart. We're looking towards the left side going to the right. So this is today, and let's say price is where it is at 0%. In fact, price uh, right here is, uh, looks like above 160, looks like uh, 165. And this is what's telling us that based on these events, we can expect that price to stay in these zones. Now, off to your right, you see a scaling here that shows the highest percentage of probability that price will enter into these zones. So. Uh, anything up in this 80 or 90 percent range is really pretty solid territory where we might expect price to go based on these technical events. And so what this cloud map is really telling us right now is that it has a very high likelihood of kind of staying holding pat or going a little bit to the bullish side over the next 30 days. Um, and then at about the 90 day mark, it tends to shoot up. Okay, the slider on the right here will change the intensity. This is just for your benefit. If you want to only see the highest in intensity zones, if you're not interested in some of those low intensity zones, you can just slim that down. But if we put it all the way to the high side, we can see some of the low probability areas that are in blue. So price anywhere in these blue areas has a probability that's higher than zero, of course, but it is, it's a low probability. It's not sure. Where we have these hot zones of yellows and reds, oranges, is where we can really expect to have the, the prices to arrive. Okay? Now, this is really, really unusual stuff. <laughs> and I'm going to get really into how we translate this and how we use it and how does this affect your trading. You know, we, you're going to do things with this that we didn't anticipate. And in fact, we've had a lot of feedback from our users already. Uh, they're using it in very creative ways. And I want to share some of those with you. Um, I believe this is being recorded. Yes. Okay. Um, what I want to do, first of all, is just kind of explain through using some of your examples. In fact, I think that's a good way to kill a couple birds with one stone here. So if you have a, a stock or a symbol, anything essentially you could chart in Metastock, um, no, it's pretty different from the Ichimoku chart, yeah. uh, because this is actually utilizing, excellent, we've got some examples here. Uh, this is utilizing a really complex algorithm that is crunching through thousands and thousands of variables. And it's looking at, from a mathematical standpoint, just tons and tons of data. And it's saying, based upon, if you look at these markers here, and if we switch to, say, if we wanted to look at a CCI oversold event, well, this is what we might see. A whole bunch of different events here. This very complex algorithm is running through, and it's learning. It's getting smarter every time this happens, and it's making these projections as to price where it's gone before. So in this case, here's the actual forecast cloud based on a CCI oversold situation, it's a little more on the bullish side than it was the 52-week high. Okay, so we can see here that after about 14 to 30 days, this looks to project about a 4, 3 to 4 percent increase for the spider. Okay, let's look at some of your, uh, some of your analysis. So now we're looking at Metastock. The, the front page of Metastock, and of course, Metastock is famous for our charting. We do, of course, anything you can chart in the world, you can do it in Metastock. We have fantastic scanning utility. We uh, pioneered the whole idea behind back testing and system testing. We do it to a ridiculously thorough degree. Uh, and this forecaster is the newest element, and it's, it's really kind of becoming something we're going to build more and more functionality into and find a lot more correlation with this. So we're really excited about what they're building right now for even the next generation of Metastock. It's pretty exciting for us. So in Metastock, we just select the, select the Forecaster tab. And let's just uh, go down your, let's go ahead and, and choose a few of these. We'll see what we can look up here. CBX, is that right? Let's also, well, let's start with that one. 
So it'll retain what you're doing. You can actually work on multiple instruments at the same time. You can see here that we've got the, uh, the ETF, the spider right there, and then right here it's calculating the cloud forecast for it. It's already kind of put up the last ever, uh, events that have taken place. So here we have the uh, Chevron looking at negative divergence in a Chaikin oscillator. So if Chaikin oscillator happens to be your brand of technical analysis and you chart with that, and let's say you had a buy signal based upon that, on that negative divergence, this would be a really useful set of markers for you. But that's why we allow you to choose from them. Uh, it might be that you're more of a stochastics person and you're looking for a stochastics oversold situation. I'm hearing from a couple of you that the the vol or the audio is breaking up. Is that for everybody or is that just a couple of you? <laughs> okay, I want to make sure. Sounds like it might just be a couple of you. Okay, all right. I won't worry about that terribly, and I hope that you guys will get those things all kind of set up. All right. Okay, PG. I'm going to get to that question. That's an excellent question. So we're looking at stochastics oversold situation. Let's look at the forecast cloud. Interesting looking cloud based on this. It's saying that definitely it has a bullish run out of the gate. It looks very bullish to start. Very red going up into the upper side over the next few days. Stays kind of bullish and then it loses its certainty at about the 14 day mark. It's, and that's, that's important information as it is. Uh, let's say you were holding a, a, a contract an option or something like that on, on this and you wanted to know from an exit standpoint that 14 days from now it really goes all over the map and it can't really decide if it has a statistical advantage to the upside or the downside. That would give you some information as to you know where you would go. Okay, But we can choose, we can go back and say well I'm really curious to know has this worked well in the past? And so what we've also included in the forecaster is your ability to go in and test it to see how it's called. For example, if I click on the last time we had a stochastics oversold event on Chevron, if I click on that, right now it's calculating up here and it's going to tell me what the cloud projection was on that day. Back on the 18th, we had this particular cloud, and let's take a look at it. So this is what was projected on that day. If we had logged in the Metastock Forecaster on this day, and we saw this, and we, this is what it would have said. And it stayed, it was actually kind of a bullish look to it. It's kind of got squoze down a little bit, but it stayed right in the channel, actually. Um, so I'd be feeling pretty confident about the cloud pattern going forward. Uh, for this. You know, recently it's called it pretty darn well. Remember, this is not dynamic. This cloud did not alter itself. It didn't get changed over the last couple of weeks. That was, in fact, the exact cloud that it called on that day. So, in a way, you can actually step back and back test, if you will, the forecaster, if that's confusing enough to say. Um, let me answer a question here for, for PJ. Different systems and events have different performance results, as shown in the statistics section. Correct. Why do some systems pick different days forward? Uh, when can we sort on the stats? So the answer to your question is why do some systems pick different days going forward? Um, if you mean the days here, that's completely within your own control. You can select 30, 90, or 100 days here, PJ. Okay. Um, and so from that standpoint, you can choose those things. But why they pick different results is the same type of, you're, you're cracking into the same can of worms as, well, why does this MACD work great on this instrument and a stochastics works great on this instrument, but not vice versa? Um, different systems call differently. There's different industries and sectors that, have, that respond differently to types of systems. Um, it is kind of about finding the systems that work well for you, all right? So, for example, if you're charting in Metastock and you're using a certain, like Alan says, he's using Metastock and the, he's using whatever system he's using for CVX is a cell right now. Well, that particular technical analysis system, I don't know what it is, Alan, but it must be something that you use and that you like. It's something that you've had good experience with and you've got it dialed into the way you use it. 
I would try to use the forecaster as a complement to what you're charting with. Use it as a second opinion based on the same type of technical analysis behind it. So you're using a very complicated algorithm that's utilizing your types of systems. That's why we put the 63 systems in there. Okay. Let me see if I can get some more of these questions here. SM, how does the cloud take into a Fed tapering Middle East foreign Asian financial crisis? Okay, it does not. The question is, fundamentally, how do the fundamentals impact these clouds? They don't, actually. Um, this is all based on technical analysis. And so it's a forecaster that's not taking into account those news stories. Now, do, does the news and those fundamental things have an impact on the technical world? Yeah. Yeah, they do. In the same way that charting um, you know, there's a lot of different schools of thought in there. Some people say, well, I'm a technical analyst and I only look at technicals, and that's all I'm going to look at today. Uh, some people look at a mixture of, of two together. Uh, but this, and it's important to know that the forecaster is crunching entirely technical data, volume, and price data that it is crunching through this algorithm. It's not taking into account fundamental events. Good. SM, you're the one from Pasadena, right? I, I, I wish I was in Pasadena this week. That's going to be two awesome games. All right, can your system be used for the Forex market? Absolutely. It works very well in Forex pairs. Let's go ahead and throw one in here. Let's just try the Euro dollar for starters. Yeah, it actually does a tremendous job with the... Uh, <laughs> All right, fine, I'll stay with you, SM. <laughs> you also have a ticket to the game? <laughs> All right. Let's see. So here we have the euro dollar, and the top one coming up here is the Chake and AD oscillator. Now remember that they're not sorting these things based on what's most effective or anything like that. These are right now, they're being sorted by most recent events. So that's the only reason that this is at the top of the list. Let's use something we haven't used yet. Let's look at a different, maybe a moving average cross down. All right, so anytime we've had a moving average cross down, it's locating those here. And right now, it's calculating the forecast cloud for that. And based upon that moving average cross down, a uh, very interesting look for the euro dollar. It has kind of an initial holding a little, little bullish here initially. It definitely shows a, a bullish bump at about the 14-day mark. And then it become, becomes very unsure of itself right here, okay? And then at about 60 days, it says, oh, yeah, it feels very confident that there's going to be a bump and a drop uh, based on that. So I look back and say, you know what? I'm curious to see if that's something that has been, you know, an event that's had success in the past, has it successfully called that in the recent past? And we'll take a look. And this is a really good example of where it kind of undershot. This is a really interesting cloud. This is what it called on that day. It really overshot everything. It kind of followed the same form, but it eventually ran through that channel there, OK? So this is an interesting example of where it might have missed that call. And I'd say, you know what, maybe the moving average 50 cross down for the euro dollar is not the signal ad I'll be looking at right now. You know, maybe it's a, let's look at a couple of different things. It's like a, like a Bollinger Band break. Oh, there's not enough. You have to have at least three or four of these. MACD cross up. Let's see what a MACD cross up says. When did this event happen? So you just hover around it, it tells you the event. And you can just kind of start, cycle through these and see which ones seem to be calling the best. Now there's a really good question I just saw. I'm trying to see if I can get back to it. Are we going to develop this for fundamentals? Yeah, yeah maybe. Jeff, I don't want to say never. I mean, we're so, we've always been a technical analysis kind of innovator. I wouldn't say that we, we wouldn't do something like that. There's a lot of development that is on the table for us right now. 
um, you're going to see a lot of very cool utilities come out of Metastock in the next two years. I can't believe some of the stuff they're developing. It shouldn't do what this stuff does, but keep your eyes open for it. And maybe that'll be something that will come in the future. I would I don't know about it right now. Um, yes, Brian, um, you can. This is this is a big one. Are you planning to, to add the capability to be able to have the user enter his own formula? Yes. In fact, that is in development now, Brian. That's something that Metastock users have been able to do for years and years with our charting. Something we're famous for is your ability to customize and create charting and technical analysis that suits your personal style. We are going to add that to the forecaster. Requires a lot of work on our end to merge this um, algorithm, the, the, the complexity of it, into your ability to do that. But that is being uh, coded right now. PJ, can we sort on the stats instead of most recent? Yes, that's the next release. PJ, well, these are great questions. You guys must have Metastock. Um, yeah, in fact, we're looking to sort these by most effective. Okay, yeah, <laughs> excellent. Uh, Mike K, is the cloud only using one of the recognized events at a time? Right now, it's only using one at a time. Um, it requires so much mathematical processing that we can't combine all the events at once. We are creating a system where it will correlate those. Uh, we may actually have to put that into a server and have you guys call it. We're trying to find a way to make it quick on your computer so it's not making you wait forever. But these are excellent questions. These are the first things that I asked <laughs> when I started using this was I said, another thing I want to do is I want to be able to put my cloud forecast on my chart. Uh, we're working on that too. So this is a really exciting and new utility um, that I think our users are going to just continue to love, um, especially you options traders and people who are working off of contracts. Uh, this could be just a huge boon to you. In fact, when we were in Vegas and we released this product, a um, couple of things happened. One uh, that I thought was very interesting is that uh, a number of the options house um, a number of uh, brokers and, and options related businesses came to us and uh, pretty much to buy Metastock. <laughs> they wanted it so badly. Um, I won't even say, I won't say who, I don't want to get myself in trouble. Um, but we caused a bit of a stir with some of the, the charting people out there. And it, one of them, a very large broker, came to me and said, oh, after I demoed this to them, they said, you know, so what you're saying is you've taken a way to project forward technical analysis so that a customer can easily see and understand. And that's exactly right. Uh, we've put it into a format and into an algorithm that is not hard to use. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to go in there and translate this data and to do something with it. Uh, I've always believed that the hardest part of trading is just your own personal confidence. And that's what these tools have been designed for. It's why we built Metastock. It's why the trading pub exists. It's why we do what we do in the community of trading is to help us make better decisions. And charting absolutely does that. And, and back testing does that. And scanning the markets does that. It takes the most uh, innovative utilities that exist today. And it says, let's use these in a way that makes sense for you for the style of trading that you do, whether you're a position trader, or day trader, whether you're trading futures, whether you're trading stocks, or ETFs, forex pairs, and put it all into a package that is easy to use, easy to translate so that you can make a better decision. So that at the end of the day, you can rest your head on your pillow and say, I did everything I can today to have a successful trade. So you don't step away feeling like you're gambling. You should step away from your trades feeling like you own a business. You are running a business, and you're going to make decisions on that business based on the best data available, using the best tools available. And when you're doing that, you generally become a better trader. You become a successful business person. Uh, too many people out there are, are just simply gambling. They're throwing it out on a hunch, saying, yeah, I heard this is good, and I'll, I'll give it a try. You know, um, That's not how I oh, let me postpone that. I want to do my update. Um, this is why we develop these types of things, and they're very exciting, and very fun to use. Um, let me go ahead and couple, uh, pick a couple more examples here that you guys suggested earlier. Let me take a look. 
And I'll try to try to hit everybody. Let's look at Amazon, shall we? Okay. All right, let's just do a little bit of analysis on this one. MACD negative divergence is coming up as the, the, last, the last hit, so we're going to start with that. I'm going to go back to my chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Scroll down. Okay. E-mini futures? Yeah, Terry, we can do that next. Yeah, and like I said, anything you can chart in Metastock, you can, you can use with the forecaster. Uh, let's look at a CCI overbought. This is one of my uh, favorite indicators. It's funny. Some people say you're either a CCI person or an RSI person. I, I tend to like them both. I, I actually find I've had a lot of success with the CCI uh, calls. So let's kind of get a feel for what the forecaster has to say about the CCI. It's calculating right now. It's running through the algorithm. Um, incidentally, just so you know, this other window, which I have not mentioned, gives you kind of all of the extra stuff there. If you're very interested in all of the statistical reports and, and dates, excellent. That's all there for you. It tells you the, the nitty-gritty uh, of what's being called. You can go in here at this top tab, by the way, and you can disable many of these. In fact, I disabled a whole bunch of the candlestick uh, patterns. Not that I'm not a big candlestick guy, but it ties up... Um, you know, my CPU usage if it's going through all of them. So I can actually enable or disable all or any or none of these uh, here, and that will speed up the process. So if you have five or six different um, technical indicators or setups that you use constantly, and you just want to, you only want to see the clouds for those, do that. Just disable all of them and select your five or six, and it will speed things up pretty quick for you, actually. It's a good way to go. Uh, Alan, you disable right here from this tab. So when you're when you're in your Metastock and you see forecast analysis at the top, right next to it is Event Recognizer Library, and you can just go out right here and you can click this and enable all or disable all or just check the ones you want to enable or disable, just like that. Very simple. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I knew you'd like that, Alan. All right. So let's look at the forecast cloud. Um, Looks like it's it's generally kind of a little bit bullish initially, and then you see that it has a higher likelihood out here at about the 14 or or 16 day or no 14 looks about 20 21 day outlook. Let's look at the uh, E mini. I'm just going to pull up the continuous contract for that. All right. All right. So we got a MACD negative divergence that just happened. Um, well, let's select. Let's go with an RSI here. So I'm trying to get everything in there that uh, you guys are familiar with. There's so many different ways to do this. I'm actually really excited to throw things like the RMO. Those of you who know Metastock or have Metastock probably have used the RMO system. It's one of my favorite systems. Uh, gives great, great setups. Um, it, it's one of my favorites. Uh, we are programming that one to go in here. It just needs to meet the approval of Mr. Mohindar before we release it to you. Okay. Scott, the forecast cloud could be could be used as an expert advisor. Yeah, in a lot of ways. I would use it in conjunction with it. Um, I would throw a chart up apply that expert advisor because the expert advisor is going to give you signals today and moving backwards, right? So you might say it's a expert advisor going forward. There's going to be some interesting integrations uh, with many of our tools over the next two years. Watch for those. I think they'll really excite you. You're going to be able to do things that nobody else can do um, in Metastock than any other platform. Uh, so here's the, the E-mini we're looking at, and right now, uh, you know, it's, it has a very bullish outlook based on RSI negative divergence. Um, let's see kind of how that's worked out. Let me go back to March 18th of this last year. And so let's pretend that back then, on March the 18th, 
Uh, we were using a forecaster here, which of course didn't exist at that time. We were still developing it. Um, but this is what it would have called on that day. And it's calculating that now. Which one did I choose? Yeah, March the 18th. We had a RSI negative divergence. Yeah, it's, and it's taking its time here, but it's a little faster. I, I've got so many of these set up, I haven't disabled any of them really. So I want to make sure we get a good selection. But this will be a lot faster in that case. Interesting here. Uh, if you look at the cloud that it generated on that day, it also was very bullish uh, at the time. And it said, you know what, it's going to stay in this channel, which it did. And earlier I, I spoke a little bit about how it kind of lost its probability sphere. This little area here was kind of darker, cooler colors where it had a lot less tendency to be in that range. And the price sure dropped out of that range. It, it, it didn't really settle in on a time. What's interesting, though, is that up here, it had a very high likelihood, and it certainly started the day there, but then had, had a, a dip. By and large, the initial outlook in the first 15 days or so was really, really good um, with this. It had a really nice call. Uh, but like I said, this would be something I would utilize in conjunction with technical analysis you're already doing. You know, systems that you have in place now uh, where I would Say you have, you know, if you're like me and you've got limited equity that you work with and you have about 10 to 20 trades you want to take tomorrow uh, because your setups look good for them, but you only got enough equity to work with maybe four, um, this is a great way to whittle through and say, you know what, I feel a lot more confident about this group of trades than I do about this one. I can whittle them down and say these are my best trades. It's just another great tool to create confidence and help you whittle it down to the very best trades. Um, let's see. Excellent questions so far from you guys. We appreciate that. Um, we are running out of time. I have to keep this one a little bit on the short side. Um, so I want to make sure we hit a couple of more of your examples before we uh, do a couple of things here. Let's look at a couple of indexes, shall we? We haven't really done that. Let's do that. Let me go ahead and get rid of that one and that one and that one. And uh, let's throw in an index. Okay. All right, so here we have the S&P. Coming up, 52-week um, highs and lows, giving us a few things to choose from here. Just such a big fan of the CCI. It's always been good to me. Yeah, Mike, that's something that we're coding right now. You know, we want to be able to run more than one cloud and overlay them. And we're also looking to uh, have a, a ranking system. Um, it was one of the first things I asked uh, when they released this was, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Can I search for the highest probability zones that where clouds are meeting in, in the middle? And they, they about threw a book at my head when I said that because it requires so much coding. But um, they are doing that. Um, that's what's so exciting about this product is that it's so new. Uh, there's going to be lots of ways. And you're, you're very instrumental. We've already received a lot of it feedback from our users and we're using that, utilizing that feedback to create the next version of the forecaster. Right now I think it stands as a really good way to help you um, with your current charting and trades. From a scanning side of utility, I think that'll be the next thing that it can do for us is you'll be able to actually overlay multiple clouds and maybe look for agreement and correlation um, between the, uh, the best signals. Um, that's why I think it will get more of like a, a scanning feel to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, good question, SM. Price of the software, Metastock comes in two flavors. And uh, the end of day, and both of these flavors of Metastock include the forecaster exactly as you see it here and what we've done today. Metastock end of day runs roughly $500. It's $499. It's a one-time fee and you own it for life. There's a data feed associated with it that's an ongoing charge. It's about $25 a month. 
uh, Metastock Pro, which is for our day traders who are placing trades and charting trades intraday. That is a $1,400 price for a one-time fee and an ongoing data uh, fee of about $150 a month, depending on the package. What we want to do for you today, though, those of you who do not have Metastock, and the support is all free, by the way, SM, and what Morgan alluded to earlier is something that's really, really important to us. Um, our support has an excellent reputation for being a, uh, a group of people you can get a hold of very easily, and it's, it's free to you. Whether it's a four-minute call or a four-hour call, <laughs> uh, we'll take care of you and help you make sure that from a technical standpoint, you're, you're well taken care of. We're based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Everybody is uh, you know, based right out of this office. Um, we do want to give you a chance, those of you who don't have Metastock, to use it. And I'm going to type in a uh, link you can go to if you want to get a free trial of it. This is for a free 30 days of Metastock. It's just Metastock. dot com slash trading pub. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. I need support for upgrade cost. For upgrade cost. So, so if I understand your question, yes, there are upgrades. Uh, the costs for the upgrades are, you know, anywhere from about hundred dollars to hundred fifty dollars, depending on what older version you have. If you have legacy version of Metastock that you purchased like 15 years ago or 30 years ago. <laughs> We've been around a long time. We have hundreds of thousands of users and customers out there and there are many people who have these old copies of Metastock. All you have to do is give us a call and we'll just give you the upgrade fee. It'll be about half price for you. So if you have an old copy, let us know. We'll take good care of you there. Um, if you don't have a copy and you'd like to give it a try, we're happy to set up a free 30-day trial for you. Um, after the 30 days, you have a choice. You can either purchase the program, we'll give you lots of options, or you can simply lease the program from us on a month-to-month -month basis. Lots of people do that. You can do it as little as $59 a month with us. Uh, it gives you the full functionality of the forecaster, all the charting, the scanning, and the utilities that we have. Okay, Metastock is a PC-based program. We have hundreds and hundreds and probably thousands of Mac users around the world, though. Um, as you're probably aware, you probably have to set up a partitioning system on your machine, like through Parallels or Boot Camp or something like that. It has to run in a PC environment. Um, what do you do if you have a data feed already from your broker? Yeah, we we don't have the ability to connect into a third-party data feed. So you do have to use our data with Metastock. All of our anti-piracy and authentication software is run through our data feed. And so you'll need that to, to essentially call home to the servers to authenticate your, your program. So we do require that you have our data feed. Excellent questions. All right. Um, yeah, Scott, we're always innovating new plugins. We're always working with people. Uh, Metastock, we've been around so long that there's you'd be hard pressed to find like a, a really successful trading guru in the last 20 years who hasn't had some systems that they've developed in Metastock. We've been around for so long that a lot of the biggest names are big Metastock users. And so we've gone to a few of them recently. I think the best one we've produced in a long time is um, one we just released uh, by Steve Bigelow. Uh, I just think he's got a terrific set of systems that we've put into Metastock that has some awesome scans in there. Um, we're actually formatting uh, some of his systems for the forecaster to be released as well. Um, pretty, it's a really good plugin. In fact, if you call or go to metastock.com, they are offering it uh, right now for $100 off. Normally it's $399. We're doing it for $299. It's a one-time fee. And Steve throws in some extra uh, bonuses as well that go to you. Um, we're working on a really, really cool plugin <laughs> that I'm not allowed to say anything about. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. 
But there's two or three I think are just going to be huge. <laughs> Morgan knows which one I'm talking about, so you better not say. I I think it'll be our our best ever. We're not publicly traded, actually. We're a private company. We used to be owned by Thomson Reuters, and last June, our longtime CEO and president of the company for the last seven or eight years, Scott Brown, he went to Thomson Reuters and pitched them a great idea and bought the company back. So he actually did a management buyout. And we are now privately owned again, like we used to be, going back to our roots. OK, it sounds like um, I got broken off there just a little bit, you guys. But uh, have a terrific new year. Um, God bless you guys, all of your trading, what you're doing. Um, we uh, we want to be a part of what you do. So we hope you'll take us up on that. Uh, on the free trial. Have a fantastic new year. Best of luck in your trading and uh, let's have a great 2014 everybody. Take care.